Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, for folks uh, hanging in the, in the back, we welcome you to come in and join our session, A Pathway for Inland Waters. Good afternoon. And good afternoon to everyone in the room and here at COP, COP15, and also to our friends and colleagues that are joining remotely online. I wanted to note we will be using Wordly today to translate from French to English, as one of our colleagues is from Gabon, who will be speaking in French, and then we have a colleague that will be translating with him on the stage um, from English to French. And so if you have your phones and could put your, um, use the QR code to download Word Wordly, then you'll be able to understand the translation. And like all technology, just keep us posted. If it isn't working, we'll go analog, right? And, and thank you so much. Um, we're standing in our translator had a medical emergency and so um, we're doing a, a kind of a, a brief adaptation so again good good afternoon welcome to everyone I'm Tara Moberg I'm a global freshwater strategy advisor with the affiliate of Nature United the global affiliate of Nature United the Nature Conservancy and on behalf of our uh, session hosts Synchronicity Earth, WWF, Conservation International, Nature Positive, Shoal, and a host of other organizations, more than, more than 20 organizations that really rallied for this message around inland waters. I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming you to this session today. Uh, we would like to begin our session with a land acknowledgement. COP15 is taking place on unceded indigenous lands. The Gaininganga Nation is recognized as the custodians of the waters and lands on which we gather today. Joe Jage, or Montreal, is historically known as a gathering place for many First Nations. Today, it is home to a diverse population of indigenous and other peoples, and we strive in Canada and around the world to support the authority and capacity of indigenous peoples to steward their lands and waters which is critical for the future of healthy freshwater ecosystems and communities. Inland waters, communities, indigenous peoples flow through every goal and target of the global biodiversity framework. Our health and resilience are foundational to the success of the framework goals, yet nowhere in the text are they assured in representation, still appearing in brackets throughout the draft. We're losing our lake 
river, um, and wetland habitats at unprecedented rates, and with them their biodiversity. Since 1970, we've lost an estimated 83% of freshwater populations, 88% of megafauna like hippos and crocodiles, 76% of our migratory fish like salmon, and 88% of our, our sorry, and 94% of our megafishes, including sturgeon and freshwater stingrays. And in the context of this COP, it's critical to understand that this is happening at twice the rate of. Sorry, it's, sorry about that, that it's uh, happening at twice the rate of uh, technological difficulty. <laughs> at twice the rate of our, thank you, of our marine and terrestrial ecosystems. In addition to losses in freshwater biodiversity, the trends in, of conversion and degradation of these habitats threatens our own livelihoods and well-being. This includes drinking water, uh, food security like rice and our global fish proteins, flood and drought risk reduction, and climate change adaptation, pollution and carbon sequestration and storage. For example, one third of our global food production comes from our rivers. And wetlands, specifically peatlands, hold 600 gigatons of carbon. While the situation is dire and the time frames for solutions measured in years, not decades, we have so much reason for hope. There was an announcement earlier this week by Prime Minister Trudeau providing more than 800 million to support indigenous-led conservation initiatives covering more than 1 million square kilometers and including the preservation of the world's third largest wetland by the Omiskegi Cree. African ministers of the environment have issued a declaration in support of inland waters. And just last month, member states passed a resolution at the Ramsar COP to improve synergies between the Convention on Biological Diversity, the Climate Conventions, the Ramsar Conventions, and the SDGs. And most importantly, our hope rests in our global leaders, our indigenous people and local communities, and our speakers today who are calling for change around the world and through this convention. We have an exciting 50 minutes ahead Hindu Ibrahim will share a keynote speech, followed by about a 35-minute panel that will be uh, moderated by Keena Murphy, and a closing video and call to action by the Global Youth Biodiversity Network. With that, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Hindu Ibrahim. She's an environmental activist and member of Chad's Pastoralist Boroa community. She began advocating for indigenous rights and environmental protection at the age of 16 founding the Association for Indigenous Women and Peoples of Chad to introduce new income revenue activities for women and collaborative tools such as 2D and 3D participatory mapping to build sustainable ecosystems and to reduce nature-based resource conflicts. Her vision is to grow support for both traditional knowledge and science and improve resilience to climate change, especially for rural communities. She's a member of Indigenous Peoples of Africa Coordinating Committee and served as a co-chair of the International Indigenous Peoples Forum on Climate Change during the UN Climate Change Conference at COP21. She's dedicated to the protection of all indigenous peoples from the Congo to the Arctic and the value of their knowledge in the fight against climate change. She advances environmental protection for indigenous peoples by participating in international policy dialogues like the CBD, the desertification, and pressuring governments to recognize the land rights of indigenous peoples to advance their solutions for climate adaptation and mitigation. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Hindu Ibrahim. Thank you very much, and uh, good morning, everybody. It's really a great pleasure to be with all of you here. As an indigenous woman coming from Chad, Chad is a landlocked country. And in my country, we are known also by the largest fresh water that is called Lake Chad. Lake Chad is the largest around all the Sahel regions, and it is one of the fifth larger fresh water in all Africa. We have more than 40 million people living and depending from this water. 
So for us, it is not only a lack. It is also a ending up of all our rivers where they can come and gather there. So you know how much it is important to do not discuss here the inland water. So they are just like excluding more than 40 million people if they didn't talk to about it in this important summit of the biodiversity. So for us, sustainable management of the inland water, it's not only for one country or one community. For Lake Chad, they are talking about Chad, about Cameroon, about Niger, about Nigeria, but also about Central African Republic where the rivers are taking the source. So if we protect it, that means we are protecting the ecosystems and the peoples who are living and depending from it. This year we get a big flooding and the flood start from the Central African Republics that come and ending up in Chad. So if we just uh, ignore that in this COP, that means we are ignoring the bigger ecosystem around the world and ignoring the life and livelihood of the communities. So for these panels, I have just uh, some key priorities to share with them and with you. So why my first priority here in Montreal is how we can adopt the framework of the biodiversity protections that can be clear to combine all the ecosystem of the world who are critical. You cannot choose an ecosystem that you wanted to protect. All of them are interlinked. So you cannot put a priority in one and leave the other. As the Congo Basin, who is the tropical forest where the river is taking the power, ending up in the middle of the desert. So you have to protect all of the way. You cannot choose. The cop here must remove the bracket into the inland water. It is not the issue of just uh, one bracket in somewhere and another that can be negotiated and exchange it and delete it completely. That must remain in the negotiations cop. This is really my first message to the negotiators. The second priority is how we can continue the collaborations around all the priorities of the various ecosystem and his species. It is not only about the water that we are talking. We are talking about the different species that the water is protecting. You have the grass as a cattle helpers. We move away from the fresh water during the dry season, but we come during the, uh, during the rain season, sorry, we move away. We come back during the dry season. That means it is a livelihood for us, but for also our cattle. And in this way, it is protecting the various ecosystems that are living there from the insect to the bears. At the same time, it must protect the in-water ecosystem who is from the nice photos of the big mammals that we saw to the small fish who are there because the combination of all that can help the water to be clear, to be sustained, and to sustain the rest of the species as they are interlinked. My third priority is how from all the two of the previous at the international levels, we can move to the nationals and local level. The implementation is very important. When we decide it in the international level, it must be turned in the national level with clear guidance and clear policies. So these policies must respect the rights of indigenous peoples because we are talking about our land, about our resources. So the human rights obligations must also be not in the bracket here because it has to be implemented at the national level where it can respect the rights of the communities to build the livelihood of the communities. So a clear uh, legislation must be done in collaborations with the communities who are living around those ecosystems. It cannot be designed only in the capitals by the, those who are called experts. The real experts of the environment are the peoples who are living on it. So it is the indigenous communities and their local peoples who are there who can be the most designed peoples on these uh, uh, legislations. Let's move to my favorite. Do we have uh, the uh, slide in the screen? So my favorite is 
how we can do it, how we can implement it at the local level. So this is a sharing of the experience of what I did personally. I did a 2D and 3D participatory mapping. Here is the examples of a 2D participatory mapping, how it's come from. We combine the science knowledge, the traditional knowledge. This is a satellite image photo that I take. It is representing over 2,500 kilometers squares. So in this one, from the satellite images, we gather 116 community chiefs from men and women that also come with them, over 1,000 people, gather and put the knowledge there. It's completely different than a satellite image that we use just for the first data. And when you look at the map, you can see the different area of the water who are there. And from this water, you can see also a different crops, uh, the, the uh, forests who are sacred for the communities, the forests that can uh, give us food as the trees that we can eat, the forests that can give us medicine. You can see the corridor of movement of cattle, the world wild from the elephant, lions, where they are living, how they are living, how we can share in these water resources. So that can give a concrete examples of how the importance of inland water can play to our entire life. So if we do the mapping right with the communities, we combine the traditional knowledge of the peoples, we can see clearly how it is important for the entire world. We lose this piece of 2,500 kilometers, I think we are going to lose humanities because they are going to fight each other to get access to the other resources. They are going to be migrant. They are going to be food insecurity. And at the end of the day, conflict over conflict, crisis over crisis. But if we protect it, how the communities want, so that can help us to protect all the in water. I'm very happy to hear from all the panelists. I hope also you are very excited to hear from them. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Hindu. I think everyone will agree that was such a brilliant start to the conversation today, and I'm sure it really energized the panelists. I'd like to introduce now uh, my colleague and friend, Dr. Kina Murphy. Kina has over 25 years of experience working on biodiversity monitoring, market-based approaches to conservation, conservation finance, community-based conservation planning, and policy. She holds a PhD in ecology and a master's in community and regional planning, and she is the Africa strategy lead for Campaign for Nature. Recently, her work is focused on how to develop innovative funding mechanisms for conservation. And I've had the pleasure of working with Kina over the last year or so um, to kind of vet the call that Indu has shared with us, which is how do we rise above this partitioning of resources and really talk about ecosystems in an integrated way. So with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Kina Murphy, who will share more about the panel. Thank you, Kina. Hello, hello. Thanks, Tara. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I, I think you can. Um, yeah, so thanks so much for that introduction, and um, it's great to be here. I am just going to be moderating this panel, and I am going to introduce our three panelists. So um, to my left, and number one, we have um, Jean-Hervé um, Mbebe, and he is the Director General of Aquatic Ecosystems um, for the Ministry of Water and Forest in Gabon. He is the program uh, where he is, he has a program which is responsible for ensuring good ecological status of inland water and marine environment. He serves as Gavon, Gabon's national focal point for the Ramsar and Minamata conventions and has more than 20 years of experience as an ethologist, ichthyologist, sorry, um, supporting several national biodiversity interventions and the um, description of new species. And then to my direct left is Christine Smith-Martin, and she is the CEO of the Coastal First Nations, which is an alliance of First Nations on um, British Columbia's central and northern coast, um, and Haidai Gwai, um, working to protect our coast and rebuild a healthy coastal 
economy. She is a member of the Haida um, Nation and Lax Kualam's community. Did I say that right? <laughs> okay. Um, and then to my right is Maria Rivera. Um, Maria Rivera is RAMS, our Senior Regional Advisor for the Americas. Um, Maria has 25 years of experience in national and international policy and on the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands. She has worked in conservation and sustainable use of wetlands at national government and intergovernmental organizations. At the Secretary of the Convention on Wetlands, uh, she leads global processes such as um, sustainable development goals and strategies with other multilateral environmental agreements, in particular the Convention on Biological Diversity. So that is our panel. And I hope I, hope I did an okay job there. That was my, my, first, my first run through. Um, so I'm just going to start off with a general question for you all. And I think you can see there are microphones beside you. Um, and that question is, how do, you, how do you feel that the Convention on Biological Diversity is going to impact the conservation and restoration of inland waters? And sort of, if, if you could think of one thing that you would like to, to, to um, achieve, or you would like to, the CBD to achieve, um, what would that be? What would you like the global biodiversity framework to really put in place that helps inland waters? Does that make sense? Uh, right, let, let's start. Let's start with, yeah. Here. Thank you very much for the inv invitation to participate in this in this panel and the opportunity, of course, to talk about inland wetlands. And I can tell that from the perspective of the Convention on Wetlands that we are a sister convention, a biodiversity-related convention. For the last four years, as many of you, we have been struggling to really see how wetlands in general, fresh water, uh, can be really uh, being reflected in the, in the framework. And for our, from our side, we don't see that we are still yet there. Uh, we have been submitting many, many statements. Uh, we participated actively in the burn. Uh, workshops one and two that was um, organized by the Switzerland government. And we have said many times with our parties and the secretariat the importance in general of wetlands and how they could be reflected. Of course, we have heard here, and we don't need to repeat the statistics. We know the information is there, the technical information is there. There are different players, actors. We have seen communities. Everybody's there. So what is the reason? that inland wetlands are not uh, really reflected. So from us, we are as well the lead agency for wetlands under the Convention on Biological Diversity. The program is not really more active anymore after the Aichi Biodiversity targets, but we have a joint work program with the Convention on Biological Diversity that we expect, of course, to, to, to renew once the, the, it, it is adopted here, the, the, the post-2020. Uh, so we see that is a great opportunity for all different players, conventions coming together and really having an impact. But um, we don't see at the moment that that is the reality. And uh, we have seen that there are different reasons. And one of them is the lack of cooperation internally. The, the, we, we see we have different focal points of the different MEAs. There are different, under the convention, we encourage parties have adopted different uh, framework in order that they can come together by uh, National Wetlands Committee with different players, communities, in order to provide advice on taking decisions on wetlands. But at the end, it's, we see that there is still isolation happening at those levels. So there are different levels. And here, the level that we are talking is who is the decision making? Who is taking the decisions now? And what will happen? Is government, government level is the one is here. And then you go to the ground, the communities, etc. But if there are not those communications, if they don't talk to each other, and we can see, as I said, there are many different focal points that are here that are not well from Ramsar. And we say, what it is going on? Why there are not inland wetlands or freshwater wetlands really reflected? And again, the answer is because they, did, they don't talk to each other for most of the governments. So if there is not coordination at that level, how we can expect that they come here and bring national positions that are include other? So 
I can tell one or two examples in some countries in particular in the, in the America that are more coordinated, and one example is Colombia, not because I am Colombian, but I worked with the Ministry of Environment in Colombia leading the, the convention for many years. So there are some countries that are doing that, but that is not the case. So it's still how we can just really work on those lines really effectively, because this is one of, one of the main issues. It, it could, maybe it sounds to you that it's not real, but I can tell you that is the, 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 the reality. So one is one of the key elements, how countries can really come together with the same approaches when we are talking about biodiversity, because we have topics fresh water, marine and coastal, all ecosystem here. One is pushing for fresh water order for, for marine and coastal, et cetera. But the thing is, what is the common element there that is from interest for all, is where all the effort needs to be put in place in order to have an impact. While that is not the case, it will be really difficult, of course, to, to, to move forward. Thank you. Thanks, I, I think that was a really great response and it also speaks to um, something that Hindu pointed out, which is that I think fresh water is, is just that connective force, right? It's, it's, and that's what we're talking about here is that we need to both, we need to connect the way we think about um, protecting our environment and biodiversity and climate change, all of it needs to come together as one. Um, and we need to also figure out how we connect our, our critical landscapes. So now I'm going to hand it over to Christina Smith-Martin, um, and she's gonna give you a bit of background about herself and answer the question. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Christine Smith-Martin. My traditional name is Hatyala. I'm Haida. I come from a clan called the Yaklanis clan in Haida Gwaii, and I'm the CEO of Coastal First Nations. I first want to acknowledge the beautiful territory that we're on, the Kani Haka, I hope I didn't butcher that too much, Mohawk Nation, thank you for allowing myself and um, to be on your beautiful traditional territory, unceded territory. I want to introduce our organization and the work that we do. Coastal First Nations, we represent 11 communities across the North Coast, uh, all the way from Haida Gwaii, Old Masset, Skidigit. I know some of you probably won't know where these are, but they're, they're a pretty significant area. Um, and then we move into the north, the end of the North Coast, which is Metlakatla, Gitgat, Gitgatla, and then Central Coast, with it, which is New Hulk, um, Wikino, Halschuk. And all of these communities um, have been working together since time immemorial. It, it didn't start when Coastal First Nations began. Neighbors in our communities have been working together for quite some time. It's really important, I think it was great questions that we had today, um, looking at some of the questions and the anticipation of the questions. One of the pieces that we know in our community that, that the fresh water is just as important as the ocean water. And when we're talking about developing models, I can only speak from our communities and, and where we come from. The important piece that we uh, always ensure that we're messaging out is it comes from the communities because in our communities they know best they are out in the waters every day and collecting data the elders the traditional knowledge that our keynote speaker talked about combining it with science where we come from we we start from the bottom up we we go and that's not meant in a bad way it's community level first and then we bring in the science we bring in that we ensure that it's embedded with traditional knowledge which is just as important as the science knowledge and yesterday you heard the big announcement of the 800 million it's an investment into not just into our communities but into the into understanding that it really has to be indigenous-led conservation because we know our communities best. Then it goes upwards. So I think when we talk about these initiatives and they talk about the framework where we come from, it really has to be done by the community and then move up and then move up to the federal government in which the announcement was yesterday. So I just really wanted to echo that from, from where we come from and our communities are, are at the, 
the marine plans and the land use plans are all done with our traditional leaders and with science and that becomes their, um, their models from our communities. Thank you. Uh, over to you, um, Sean Hervé. Thank you. Um, I'm Jean Hervé MVB. Um, I come from Gabon, and um, I'm very excited to be here. And uh, in my opinion, uh, to preserve biodiversity is also to preserve uh, biodiversity language. It, um, so I don't, uh, I speak in French because I, uh, it's important for me. Je viens donc d'un petit pays d'Afrique uh, centrale um, qui a 2 millions d'habitants qui est à peu près six fois plus petit que le Québec où nous nous trouvons, deux fois plus petit que la France. Et c'est un pays qui est connu pour être un pays de forêt. Ok, I will translate. Can you hear me? So, um, I come from a small uh, country uh, called Gabon. Um, it's a very small country, two million people, um, and... It's a country that is known as a forest country, especially. Yes, it's, sorry. It's known as a forest country, essentially. Okay. Um, often, when we sell my country, uh, we will tell you that it's the only country in the world where you can go to the surf with hippopotamus. Oh yeah, that's true. So, generally, when people talk about Gabon, uh, they say that's the only country in the world where you can surf with apos. Alors, euh, ce qui est important de, de noter aussi, euh, en termes de quelques chiffres que je vais donner, c'est que les, on a beau être 2 millions d'habitants, les populations gabonaises consomment à peu près 40 kg de poisson par an et par individu. Ok. Um, here are some important figures. Even if we're only 2 million uh, people, uh, each Gabonese will eat 40 kg of fish uh, per year. Mon pays aussi, c'est un pays où vous allez trouver une rivière tous les 500 mètres. It's also a country where you find a river every 500 meters. Alors, vous allez donc comprendre pourquoi les eaux douces chez nous sont quelque chose d'extrêmement important. So you can really understand why fresh water is very important in Gabon. Alors, nous on est un peu euh, embêté par la, la CDB parce que dans l'histoire, l'une des premières conventions qui a été signée est la convention de Ramsar qui s'adresse en fait aux eaux douces principalement. So we're a bit annoyed by CBD because the first convention that was signed in history was the Ramsar Convention. Et ce qu'on note, c'est que la CDB euh, fonctionne comme les humains vis-à-vis -vis, en fait de l'eau. On a toujours peur de l'eau. L'eau euh, fait peur. C'est un peu les eaux douces, les marécages, c'est signe de maladie, c'est signe de saleté. Et on a l'impression que dans la mise en œuvre de la CDB aujourd'hui, les, les eaux douces ne sont pas vraiment adressées comme il faut. So the main problem is that fresh water is always seen as, like, can be um, not clean, dangerous for humans, and in terms of the implementation at the CBD, this is very difficult and we haven't seen much yet. 
parce qu'on s'adresse surtout dans cette convention à des espèces euh, un peu sexy, les éléphants, les primates, et euh, on oublie en fait euh, le milieu qui est le milieu de vie. Les relations que beaucoup de peuples ont avec les eaux douces sont des relations au-delà euh, qui vraiment sont très importantes en termes de service. Si vous prenez un éléphant dans mon pays, euh, c'est juste du steak. Si vous prenez une rivière, c'est énormément de services, de l'eau de boisson, du transport, avoir des protéines, mais aussi pour rêver les mythes, les sirènes, etc. So usually CBD uh, focused on, you know, sexy animals like elephants and primates. Uh, but for us in Gabon, you know, rivers are very important. So CBD doesn't really consider fresh water, but fresh water ecosystems play a major role. And there's a real connection between people and rivers. Uh, Rivers provide lots of things, um, so not only food, but also water, and uh, that's why it is so important for us. Merci. That's it. Yeah, um, I think I'm, am I on? Yeah, okay, I'm uh, sorry. So, I mean, you guys answered all of the questions that we had already in your, your one answer. That was really beautiful. Yeah, so we just have a few minutes left and um, maybe, I mean, uh, you know, what you've all said is just so beautiful and it's so really right on. It's amazing that we're, talk we're here talking about biodiversity and yet we, we've given so little focus to fresh water, which of course every living thing depends on, right? Um, And, you know, we, we often say that oceans are an afterthought, but then, like, you know, fresh water is like an after-afterthought, right? So what, what, what do we need to do? Like, how do we really raise the profile of, of fresh water? What, what do you guys think um, are, are some of the solutions? What, what should we be working on? What should we be focusing on? How should we be getting the word out? Je comprenais? Yeah? Uh, tu oh, peux avoir ma, ma slide? J'avais euh, quelque chose à vous montrer, mais euh, très rapidement, ce que je peux dire, c'est que, euh, voilà, euh, cette slide, en fait, résume tout ce que j'ai envie de vous dire. Euh, mon pays, c'est six bassins hydrographiques connectés avec tous les voisins, Guinée équatoriale, Cameroun et Congo. Ok, cette slide summarise everything I wanted to say. So my country, as you can see, there are um, six freshwater basin regions uh, connecting the Gabon with all the other countries around. Alors, euh, mon pays aussi, c'est euh, des services, parce que la, la photo que vous voyez en haut, c'est la, euh, la rivière la plus importante de mon pays, parce qu'il y a plusieurs barrages hydroélectriques. Um, so in this country, you know, at, at the top you can see the biggest river we have, and it provides um, lots of services. And we have um, dams on these rivers, you know, so it provides lots of services for the population. Alors, c'est aussi les services ici. J'ai mis des dames pour voir tout ce qu'on fait autour de l'eau et toute la mystique qui est autour de l'eau. It also includes all the services around the dams, the, the water, and everything that is provided by water. Mais mon pays, c'est aussi ça. Je ne sais pas si quelqu'un ici a déjà pris sa voiture et roulé sur, dans une rivière remplie, mais c'est aussi ça. My country, it's also the bottom photo. It's this. I don't know if any one of you has ever driven uh, in, like, almost a river like this, uh, but my country is also this, floodings. C'est pour ça que nous nous avons décidé, parce que dans le cadre de toutes les politiques actuelles, même dans ce qui est euh, de la création des parcs, ce n'est pas vraiment créé en pensant à de l'eau douce. Et nous avons, dans le cadre de tout le monde parle de 30 fois 30, nous on a ajouté 30 encore. L'idée aujourd'hui est d'essayer de protéger 30% des eaux douces euh, du Gabon 
C'est vraiment le message, c'est la volonté actuelle sur laquelle nous travaillons. Je sais qu'on n'a plus beaucoup de temps, mais c'est vraiment ce résumé que je voulais faire. Ok, so quickly. Um, in terms of legislation in Gabon, what's very important for us um, is really to emphasize the fact that we need to protect 30% of fresh water. Uh, this is really, really the main important point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, in our communities that, that we come from, it's really important to understand that in our communities, the provincial and federal agencies that are responsible for um, checking on the creeks, checking on the oceans, um, with extensive, our, our, our territories are, are quite vast and, and, and extensive, and it makes it difficult for them they aren't able to get to those places to look at the creeks, to look at the rivers, to look at the, the spawning beds. Um, and so our, our communities all have what we call the coastal guardian watchmen. And they fill in the gaps in our communities. And they have a strong presence in their own territories. Um, our guardians have a recorded 38,964 hours of patrol within our region and in our communities. A uh, standard approach that data collection that encourage collaborations between nations and provides data for regional decision making. So that's really important because we are the only ones that have the data within our territory. So some of the pieces that we're looking at increasing so that we can protect that is what we call creek walks. We're going up the creeks, walking there because sometimes you can't get to any of these uh, places by boat. So our guardians get out and they walk. Our guardians go out and they check how many salmon are returning. We count all of those salmons, we record all of those salmon, and sometimes we provide the information so that people can make informed decisions what, are, what is happening within our community. Uh, in indigenous communities, we very much look at uh, the rivers and all of the pieces that go into the ocean, they're all equally as important in our territories. One is, not e one is not more important than the other. They are very interconnected. So all of our territories watch out for that, and that's really important. And, and that really um, provides for all of us a really comprehensive look at those rivers, those oceans, to ensure that we are maintaining and protecting and ensuring that there's an abundance. So I, I really want to lift my hands up to our Coast Guardian Watchmen programs in all of our communities because they are their eyes and the ears of our communities to keep watch. So we go out there every day to make sure that this is being taken care of. Thank you. Again, on, from the perspective of a, of, a, of a convention, of course, we see why it is important at this stage and is here and now. There won't be further opportunities. Is really to use existing mechanism. We have heard communities, different actors, players. The information is there. The mechanisms are there. So the message is, use what it is right now in order to in order to start. The very important element is what uh, uh, the director from Gabon has expressed it, is the really the political will and the commitment. Whatever it is, 30 by 30, start with something and put a clear measure. So all can work on that direction. So conventions are there, local actors are there, different places are there, and all can move, can move together. So I think that those are the, the key messages, working together but use existing mechanisms in order to move together and forward. <laughs> that was really, really beautiful, and thank you all for coming. Um, I think in, in, in summary, uh, what I've really heard is one that we, we really need to reconnect with our indigenous communities and listen to them and, and um, you know, and, and, and think really from the bottom up, and I think that that's, that goes 
without saying whether you're indigenous or whether you're a rural person, I think we, we need to take the time to really um, you know, consider our ecosystems and that, and then the other thing is that, you know, water connects us all and that we need to connect all of the dots from, from you know, grassroots um, sort of work and activism all the way up to sort of the, the national level and our leaders and get them to, to, to actually, you know, put the resources into, into protecting our ecosystems, but it needs to start from the ground up and, it, and we need to start um, listening to those people who are connected to the land. And um, I always like to invoke <laughs> the um, Ubuntu um, saying, which is, I am because nature is, or I am because you are. And I think we all need to really, really focus on that and remember that and, um, and take it to heart. And so um, I don't know if any of you have any last remarks. I think we have one minute, right? Um, so just, <laughs> okay. okay. But thank you so much for being here. I just, sorry. Um, I, I think just the last messaging, um, you just summed it up very well. And looking to the indigenous community is really important, especially in our area, um, because they, as I mentioned earlier, they are the ones that are out there. They have the ancestral knowledge of that territory. They have a lot of the traditional knowledge that has been passed down that is now incorporated into land use plans, marine plans, and you do have to have that political push to be able to make these uh, big significant changes. So I think yesterday when we talked about our big announcement, we have a lot of work to do to get there. And our communities are in a place now where they are, are really pushing that work forward. And it's a good example of really allowing the communities to talk about the protected areas and allowing someone like the, the government of Canada to say yes we believe in the work that they're doing so this will be uh, we're gonna just start our work the announcement was a little bit of the piece of that work but now our communities are gonna lead the way in indigenous conservation which I think is going to be the key thank you Hello everyone. Um, well, thank you so much for that fantastic uh, discussion that we just heard for all these really important remarks, um, basically all calling to lift the brackets on inland waters. Forgot that I can take my mask off. Um, a very quick introduction to myself. My name is Felix Feider. I'm a freshwater program officer at Synchronous the Earth, supporting uh, locally led inland water or freshwater conservation around the globe. I now have uh, the pleasure to introduce the next segment, um, a call to action, call for action from indigenous peoples and local communities from around the globe, uh, people that weren't able to join us here today in person, um, basically a call to action to conserve inland waters, to protect inland waters. This video was pulled together in just a little bit more than one week, uh, so really thank you a lot for everyone working on it and all those fantastic contributions that came in in a very, very short time. My name is Brian Holmes. I'm from the Upper Nicoloban Silk Territory. Soy Valeria Paso, vivo en el paraje Chipauquil, que está ubicado al pie de meseta de Somoncura, eh, Patagonia, Argentina. My name is Adam Juliman, and I'm currently standing next to the largest car spring in Europe. And this river is located in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Meu nome é Maria Cunha, eu moro no Rio Juruá, na Amazônia Brasileira, na região do Médio Juruá. <música> I have found memories related to this beautiful river. Today, unfortunately, our river is not the same as it was 30 years ago. It is a victim of increasing pollution from waste waters that end up in the river itself. The plant and animal life in Buna River is more and more endangered every day. 
Moramos aqui há várias gerações, pescando para alimentar nossas famílias. Esse pedral é um refúgio e o maior berçário de peixes na área, com peixes ameaçados de extinção. Mas o governo quer explodir nosso pedral do Noreção por mais de dois anos para exportar só de minério, recusando estudar os peixes que moram no fundo do rio até 80 metros, afetando mais de 200 quilômetros de culturas. Over the time our people are fishing this lake, uh, the sustenance fisheries of burbot and kokanee, uh, we've seen changes to the water in terms of algae blooms uh, becoming more toxic more often, the water temperatures are getting more extreme. Y tenemos eh, especie única en el mundo, como la mojarra y la rana. Las amenazas que la especie que existe en el, en el arroyo son los peces exóticos que, que no son de lugar. Nós fazemos um trabalho de conservação comunitária do Pirarucu e das tartarugas, que são animais que foram muito capturados para venda e por isso foram quase extintos. Ao longo da minha vida, eu presenciei o número de peixes aumentar nos lagos. E hoje em dia, a pesca regulada do Pirarucu gera renda para as famílias daqui. Trabalho de conservação comunitária como esse precisa de mais financiamento. Precisamos da Amazônia de pé, com rios limpos e pessoas felizes. Por isso pedimos a vocês, protejam a água doce. Monaco, proteger o environnement na bisso. Posso que tosan na bongo te to coca co proteger o environnement na bisso. Sam quan thop na lai dan. Jing jam pen ni tong mi kan hai kan sam nun kae kai pan ha, rom thang pong kan pan ha ti keit khun na anakot duoi. We need to protect these fresh waters. Pedimos a vocês que protejam os rios do mundo. Proteja nossas águas. Please protect inland waters. Pedimos a vocês protejam os rios do mundo. Yes, so just to introduce myself, I'm Shruti, so, uh, Shruti Kotil, so I belong to the Global Youth Biodiversity Network, and this is something similar to what we also have as a call for action uh, among, uh, from the global youth community, and I would like to present the call for action from the perspective of freshwater inland waters here now. So the call for action for Gibbon has always been without bias, and we would like to use this platform and this event to send out a strong message on how inland freshwater should not be sidelined in the global biodiversity framework, and the world has for long taken inland and freshwater for granted, in spite of the fact that it was an integral part of all of our lives and it still is. And therefore, even now, even though it's mentioned now in the GBF, we want the brackets lifted around the world of freshwater and, uh, and inland waters. And it has to be done in a way that respects the rights of IPLCs, women, youth and children, and recognize that they're an important part of implementing the goals and targets of the GBF. So, the, one of the consultations that we do as Gibbon, we found out that transformative education and intergenerational equity is an important aspect that the global youth want. And we recognize that inland freshwater in this aspect, in this issue of transformative education is critical so that people realize the importance of the crisis that we're currently in. 
So in the world, the rivers and the flowing freshwater bodies have been, have been subjected to land grabbing and encroachment and pollution. And now it's time to call everybody's attention to this aspect and, and realize that we, there are contributions and impacts that we can make as general public as well as youth in protecting our inland waters and bodies. I would like to end by saying that for effective and noticeably ambitious transformative GBF, we need the brackets lifted around freshwater bodies and, in, and it is important that we do that in a form that it is not just listed as part of an ecosystem or habitat and is ac actually explicitly mentioned within the GBF as a call for action. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shruti, for that call for action and those very poignant remarks. Um, that already brings us to the end of our event today. Um, I'd like to give a really big thank you for everyone that took uh, time of the really busy COP15 schedules to come and join us here today and listen to us. Uh, thank you very much to our amazing speakers, to the fantastic moderation, um, to this amazing, uh, everybody that really contributed to this event. Um, as um, we already mentioned before, there were, I think, close to 20 organizations that uh, contributed to this and supported this. So I also want to say thank you to them. Thank you to the Durable River Protection Coalition, Equilibrium Research, Freshwater Life, um, Inland Fisheries Alliance, International Rivers, uh, ICN, the uh, Species Survival Commission, the World Commission on Protected Areas, uh, Living River Association, Wetlands International, Youth Engaged in Wetlands, and uh, Rewild, and the Wildfowl and Wetland Trust. Thank you very much. Now, just to close this, I'd just like to motivate everyone that was here today to take the messages that we heard, take them into the meetings, into the events, into the negotiations in the days ahead. Um, if we have uh, delegates here from, from um, party members, please work on removing the brackets on inland waters. And uh, everyone, I'd like to invite you to stay around. Uh, we have some lunch provided for you, so we can continue the conversation afterwards. Thank you very much. <laughs>